In this video, I'll be proving the prime number theorem once and for all. More specifically, I'm going to prove that the limit as x goes to infinity of theta of x over x is equal to 1. How I'm going to do this is not by looking at this limit in particular. All I'm going to do is prove that theta of x does not grow particularly faster than x or particularly slower than x. Although theta of x is O of x, really what big O of x means is that theta of x grows slower than x or at the same rate of x. <clears throat> so I'm going to show that it isn't slower than x. I'm going to prove first is that theta of x does not grow particularly faster than x. So suppose there existed lambda bigger than 1 such that for sufficiently large x that theta of x is bigger than or equal to lambda x. Meaning that theta of x grows faster than x very specifically because this, uh, this scales x up and saying that theta of x grows faster than that. Okay, and I'm going to reach a contradiction by this. Okay, namely that if I had the integral from x to lambda x of Let's look at the integral from last time. Theta of t minus t over t squared dt. Now, what do I know? Well, I know that this has to be bigger than or equal to the integral from x lambda of x. Theta of t is bigger than or equal to lambda t. So I can go ahead and put in lambda. Is that this, I'm not going to put in a t. I'm actually going to put in an x. Because theta of x is non-decreasing. It doesn't decrease over any amount. It's always increasing so that I can just, instead of putting t, which is changing over this interval, I can just put x because it's still going to hold. Lambda x minus t over t squared dt. But using a substitution, this is quite easily seen to be equal to the integral from 1 until lambda of lambda minus t over t squared dt, which is bigger than zero, easily. But what does this tell us? Well, let's go ahead and take, say, x, let's sum over powers of lambda. Okay, so we'll start off with x equals 1. So we're going to have the integral from 1 until lambda, and then of this, plus the integral from lambda until lambda squared of this, plus the integral from lambda squared to lambda cubed of this, so on and so forth, all the way, uh, all the way up powers of lambda, okay? And this will, in fact, be bigger than or equal to, by this right here, the integral from 1 to lambda, of lambda minus t over t squared plus the integral from 1 to lambda of lambda minus t over t squared plus the integral from 1 to lambda of lambda minus t over t squared plus infinitely on. But each of these are bigger than 0 so that this is an infinite sum, meaning that this right here also has to be an infinite sum. But it, using properties of integrals, you want to know what else this is equal to? The integral from 1 until, because lambda is bigger than 1, this will go all the way up until infinity of the thing we had inside, which is theta of t minus t over t squared. But theta of t minus t over t squared converges, right? And you might say, well, what if x equals 1 doesn't satisfy this because we need a sufficiently large x? Well, what I do is I just truncate it up to a point that's necessary. So here I'm going to have some power of lambda. And then I'm just still going to have an infinite sum down here. So that this should also converge since it's a smaller integral than 1 to infinity by the video last time. But it's equal to infinity. So there's a contradiction here theta of x cannot be bigger than or equal to lambda of x for sufficiently large x. Now let's go ahead and do the exact opposite. 
So that's 4 lambda less than 1. Theta of x cannot be less than or equal to lambda of x for sufficiently large x. Let's go ahead and show this so that it doesn't grow particularly slower than x either. Okay, let's instead look at the integral from lambda x until x. Because lambda is less than 1, this is the correct orientation of theta of t minus t over t squared, dt. Okay, but this is going to be less than or equal to the integral from lambda x until x of lambda x, not t, because theta of t is non-decreasing, minus, then I'm going to have t over t squared dt, and then by simple means of substitution, it's going to be equal to the integral from lambda until 1 of lambda minus t over t squared dt, but in this case, it's less than 0. Okay, so same exact thing. What I'll do is I'll say, how about we start off with x equals 1 over lambda? So that'd be the integral from 1 until 1 over lambda, or lambda to the minus 1 of that, plus the integral from lambda to the minus 1 to the lambda to the minus 2 of that, plus the integral from lambda to the minus 3 to lambda to the minus 4 of that, so on and so forth. It's going to be less than or equal to the sum from lambda until 1 of lambda minus t over t squared dt plus itself an infinite amount of times. But this, all of these are going to be negative so that this entire thing has to be minus infinity so that this right here also has to be minus infinity. But again, same exact reason. This is less than 1, so that each of these powers will continue going up and up. So that this minus infinity has to be equal to the integral from 1 until infinity of theta of t minus t over t squared dt. But this converges again, so it can't be minus infinity. But if you say that, well, maybe that lambda to the minus 1 isn't sufficiently large enough, but you just truncate it until you get to a sufficient point. Right there, we're going to have some lambda to the minus n, but it still should converge. So that there is a contradiction, so that this doesn't make sense. And so we get that theta doesn't grow particularly faster or particularly slower, and using some basic properties of limits and such, you can actually prove that this implies this. But now, how do I know that this implies the prime number theorem? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what I did when I first introduced this function, why it might be useful to the discussion, which is the sum for p less than or equal to x of natural log of p is less than or equal to the sum for p less than or equal to x of natural log of x, which is natural log of x pi of x, okay? That's just how I first introduced this, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove it sort of the opposite way. For epsilon bigger than zero, what am I going to have? Well, theta of x is definitely going to be bigger than or equal to the sum for p between x to the 1 minus epsilon and x. So for all of those primes between x to the power of 1 minus epsilon and x, then the sum of the natural log of p right there. This is obviously going to be um, less than or equal to theta of x, which is then going to be bigger than or equal to the sum from x to the 1 minus epsilon less than or equal to p less than or equal to x of instead 1 minus epsilon times natural log of x. That's not too hard to prove, but this right here is going to be equal to 1 minus epsilon times natural log of x times this sum right here for b between between x to the 1 minus epsilon and x 
of 1, which is then going to be equal to 1 minus epsilon times natural log of x times, that's practically going to be pi of x. Just stated how I said it before, counting it by summing over 1s, except there's a problem. I have this lower bound, which not necessarily works. So what I have to do is actually add some O of x to the 1 minus epsilon, right? Now you're like, doesn't this bring up a lot of problems then? But what you don't realize is that O of x to the 1 minus epsilon is in fact slower than O of x, which theta of x is. Theta of x is O of x. This right here is something slower times natural log of x. That makes it even slower. What you essentially get out of it is 1 minus epsilon times natural log of x times pi of x, because this doesn't really affect the growth much. And that shows it. What that went ahead and showed was that the limit of pi of x, natural log of x, over theta of x is equal to 1. Okay, now that's because they grew at very similar rates via those inequalities, and you can prove using properties of limits that this must be the case then. But what I can then do is I can then add in an x. Okay, so I have pi of x, natural log of x, over x, over theta of x, over x, has to be equal to 1 as well. But then, theta of x over x, the limit as x goes to infinity of that is just 1, so that the limit as x goes to infinity of pi of x, natural log of x over x, which is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of pi of x over x over natural log of x, has to be 1. And that's the prime number theorem. This is one of the most important theorems of the 19th century and even 20th century in number theory. It shows many of the properties of primes and can actually be used to further some work into the Riemann hypothesis, which I may make videos on in the future. And that's it.